pretty interesting uh, deal how the <clears throat> how the roadster came to be in Salt Lake City. Uh, my grandson Andy, Mike's boy, <clears throat> for the last seven years would get to Bonneville, and Andy would dis disappear. <clears throat> he'd go find George Potitz's pit, and he'd just hang around with George and his crew. Me and Mike, we're nobody, you know. I mean, Andy thought George Pote walked on water, you know. So anyway, over the funny thing happened during the last seven years, they got to be pretty close friends. George Pote's an interesting guy. He took a, a real interest in Andy. He knew he raced go-karts. He knew he was interested in a lot of things. And I'm, I'm still debating whether George did us a favor or put, us, put, the, put the curse on us. But two years ago, George come over and asked me, he said, what are you going to do when uh, Andy gets old enough to start getting licensed out here at Bonneville? And I said, oh, yeah, I don't know. I'll probably talk to my friend Larry Volk and make a deal with him. And George said, no, no, don't do that. <clears throat> when Andy's old enough, I'll make my roadster available to you. In fact, I'll give it to you. And he even said, I'll even deliver it in Salt Lake on the trailer with the spare motor and ready to run. So two years go by, <clears throat> 2013, <clears throat> we're standing in the pits and George, is, we're standing there talking to George and he's, I said, George, uh, is that deal still good on uh, what we talked about two years ago? And he kind of looked at me and he said, oh, you mean the Roadster? I says, yeah. He says, absolutely. He said, we got it with us. <clears throat> and when we're done, we'll just clean it up and bring it down and it's yours. And I said, well, George, he, <clears throat> pardon me, he says, what does Andy think about it? And I said, oh, we haven't told Andy. And he says, really? And I said, no, <clears throat> I don't want to tell him and Mike don't want to tell him. We think you ought to tell Andy about the roadster. And I says, but you got to give him some of the ground rules. And he looked at me and he says, I know exactly what, what you want me to tell him. He says, come by my pit tomorrow and we'll take care of that in the morning. <clears throat> so we went down and was BSing with George in the pit. And he let, he went, put his arm around Andy and he said, Andy, get your grandfather and your, your dad. I want Come over here, I want to talk to you. And all of a sudden, Andy thought, uh-oh, must be in trouble. And, and we walked over by the roaster, and George says, <clears throat> Andy, I think you're a really fine young man, and I'd like to be part of your driving experience. So I made a deal with your grandfather. I sold him this car for five bucks, and it's yours to drive and to get licensed up in. And here's the deal, schoolwork, citizenship, and he laid down all the, it sounded like me talking. Anyway, uh, that's how it came about. <clears throat> the deal is, it's our car as long as we want it. George just says, Terry, you can paint it, you can do whatever you want to it. I would just like it back to, kind of special to him. He wants it back. So he said he'd buy it back for the five bucks when we're done, whether it's three years, four years, whatever. So we intend to have a lot of fun with it. <clears throat> Some of our crew guys are going to get a chance to drive it. They've worked, <clears throat> they work for nothing. They, I'd say they work for food, but I don't even feed them all the time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to be able to reward few of our crew guys was get them a ride down the salt. Uh, 
but the main goal is Andy and uh, George Portita. Like I said earlier, Andy thinks he can walk on water, and George just keeps proving that he can by putting up all them 400 mile an hour numbers. So thanks, George. You tend to have some fun with your car this year. Thank you.